Hello. This is Taylor. So, I recently turned 26. <laughs> Old lady, I know. And in the wake of this new year of my life, I have been reflecting. What are the principles that I live by? Because even though I do not have it all figured out, I have some things figured out. I think. <laughs> and jokes aside, in the pursuit of being as helpful as possible to my beloved viewers, you guys, I thought that today I would share some of these life principles, some of my life hacks, if you want to call them that. And I always forget to ask, but if you guys enjoy my videos at all, please consider hitting the thumbs up and subscribe. Totally free. I put a lot of work into these videos, so I would very much appreciate it. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> Principle number one buy the fucking coffee. Let me explain. The older I've got and the more years that pass where I have made a living for myself, the more conviction I have on this point. And it is that I truly believe that a core tenant of being beyond financially independent and having some disposable income is having some pool of guilt-free spending money. Now, I will not drone on and on about financial responsibility, saving, investing, and paying off debt. I hope it goes without saying, if you guys know me at all, let's just take that as a given that you've already done that. If you then have some disposable income, I really don't think that money is made to be stockpiled. To each their own, of course, but this is my video, so this is my opinion. <laughs> I personally have found such empowerment, freedom, and honestly happiness in letting myself spend a bit more freely in the last year on things that I value. Keyword, value. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm not a foodie. That's right, folks. I live in New York City and I don't care that much about food. Yeah, I like tasty food. Who doesn't? It feels good on my tongue. But I don't really love going out to try like the hottest restaurants in New York. It's just not my thing the way that it is for a lot of my friends. And that's okay. It just means I don't put a ton of my disposable income towards that. Now, some examples of things I do value in case you guys resonate with any of these. And this is an non-exhaustive list. I care about more things than this. <laughs> Number one, fun experiences with friends. So for example, I will happily pay for live music concerts. In fact, earlier this year, I paid for a music festival where I knew, of course, some of the artists, but I didn't know a lot of them, but I was like, that's gonna be fun. That's a good group of friends. It's a new experience. I'll pay for it. Ended up being the best weekend of the year. Second thing is health and fitness. Now I'm not super deep in this space, but when it comes to like exercise, I spend a good amount of money on workout classes because that is completely what works for me. It's what gets me out of the house. It's what has given me a consistent workout routine in the last like four or five months. And this is not sponsored, but I use ClassPass. It basically gets my classes to be like 25% off. I do have a link down below if you guys wanna also sign up. Not sponsored, but it makes it cheaper, so. And last big thing I can think of is convenience and safety. So for me, that means like Ubering at night instead of walking or taking the subway. Or let's say there's a flight that's a bit more expensive than a different one, but it gets me in a few hours earlier. It saves me a connecting flight, whatever it is, I will pay for that convenience. So in a way that's kind of buying myself time, which I think is actually the best thing that money can buy you, but that's a different discussion. So it is in these categories that I let myself spend responsibly, but importantly, guilt-free. So the reason that I title this principle as buy the fucking coffee is because it is such an overdone thing in the personal finance community that says, you know, don't buy the $5 coffee now because in 50 years it'll be worth If that coffee brings you higher marginal joy, productivity, it gets you out of the house and you can afford it, buy the coffee and don't feel bad about it, in my opinion. Okay, the next principle is something that I hold incredibly near and dear to my heart. It's probably my favorite, most important one on this list, and it is actively cherishing my youth. This is something that I have done much more consciously in the last year or so, and that is making a very concerted effort to appreciate and enjoy, make the most of this time in my life while I'm young. So what does this even look like? For me, it comes down to things like taking a small mental step back while I'm having a happy moment and feeling grateful for it right then and there. And it's not so conscious where it like takes me out of the present, out of that moment, but if I'm in the middle of a good workout and I'm like, my body feels good, I'm so grateful that it works this well. <laughs> or if I'm out and about with my friends and I'm having like a good belly laugh, you know, you know the laugh I'm talking about. Sometimes I'll just be like, damn, this is fun. I'm so grateful for this person, for these people around me. So put a little bit more bluntly, being aware of my own mortality and <laughs> realizing I can only do this thing once, so I better actively appreciate it along the way, has 1000% brought me more meaning and fulfillment in my day to day. And I hope this doesn't sound morbid despite me literally just talking about mortality because <laughs> I think that this principle is actually a very positive one because it really revolves around amazing things like practicing gratitude, as I said, in the day-to-day, -day, being present, being selfish, taking care of myself and my needs now, since I'm only taking care of myself and in 10 years, hopefully I'll be
be taking care of other little tailors, but for now, it's just me. Building meaningful relationships with people that I really, really care about and being okay letting go of other ones and taking risks while I can, while I'm still young. These really are beautiful, powerful things. And yes, I'm a young person, so this was focused on youth, but cherishing life, of course, applies to all ages. Every phase of life is transient and every phase is special in its own way. Point is, life is beautiful and you only get one, so cherish it. Next principle, a comment that I get a lot on my YouTube videos is, Taylor, how are you always happy? You seem immune to depression. <laughs> Someone actually said that the other day. Setting the record straight, I am not always happy, okay? No matter how real something might seem on social media, these things are by definition curated. Don't be fooled. <laughs> but I do handle stress very well, I will admit. And for the most part, I am a happy camper usually. <laughs> so this principle is something that I think really helps me maintain this. It's something that I've kind of lived by for years and I have talked about it on this channel, but not for a long time. So here it is again. When you're going through a stressful period or you have a big life decision in front of you, whatever it is, take a step back and ask yourself, will this matter in one year? in five years? The answer is almost always no. Sure, it's still something you have to do and it might be stressful and grueling. It's not like you can just be like, ah, it's not gonna matter, so I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but most things are just not as scary as we make them out to be in the moment. So a way I was thinking about this with a friend recently, which I really, really like, is if you think about life as kind of these peaks of stress and troughs of not stress. <laughs> Life, a lot of the time, looks like this. A lot of variation. But if you zoom out one year, two years, it looks a lot more like this. A much smoother line, less variation. And if we can kind of force ourselves to know that in time, it's gonna look more like that, that perspective has just helped me chill out and not take things more seriously than they need to be taken in the moment. So as simple and dumb as this trick might sound, give it a try, see what it does for you. And the fourth principle. Yo, what's up? I'm uh, just taking a commercial break and scrolling on Instagram. Scrolling on Instagram? You're not thinking about how to diversify your revenue streams as a content creator? Mm, not currently. I thought you were building up your brand. Yeah, well, I am, but it's daunting. Have you tried using Kajabi? No, what's Kajabi? Oh, it's this all-in-one platform that helps creators and entrepreneurs build businesses online by unlocking recurring revenue streams. Oh, interesting, how do they do that? They basically give you this one-stop shop to help turn your skills and passions into courses, exclusive membership sites, subscription podcasts, and a ton more. And all of this is underpinned by analytics, marketing tools, third-party integrations, and easy payment options. This sounds awesome. Do you need a ton of followers though? No, you actually don't need a huge audience to make a sustainable income on Kajabi. There are thousands of creators making six, seven-figure incomes with fewer than 50K followers. Amazing, can I sign up? Yeah, right now Kajabi's actually offering a free 30-day trial to start your own business. If you go to kajabi.com slash taylorbell, that's K-A-J-A-B-I.com slash taylorbell. Perfect, thanks Taylor. Mm -hmm. Go to kajabi.com slash taylorbell to earn more doing what you love, and thanks Kajabi for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Hey, is that a pack of sardines? And the fourth principle, at the risk of this sounding like a cliche, it, it quite literally is, it's a saying, but I think it's one that is worth its weight. My roommate said it the other day and I was like, damn, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> the grass is greener where you water it. So let's talk about it a little bit. I think that it is so easy to constantly seek out something better elsewhere or to get in that negative thought loop of, Oh, if my situation was like his or hers, I'd be so much happier. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you should make a change. I'm certainly not advocating for complacency here. But I do think that a lot of the time, we do not adequately place enough time, attention, and effort into our existing situation. Whether it be our job, our relationship, or even really minuscule things like, oh, should we go to that other bar? That'll probably be more fun. Honestly, by the time you get in the Uber or walk 15, 20 minutes to the other bar, you'll probably lose steam and it won't be as fun as if you just stayed where you were and just started dancing and made the most of the situation. Yeah, that's a silly example, but I think it applies. Now, maybe a more practical one that we can all relate to is our job. Especially in me and my friend's world of finance and consulting jobs, it is really easy to get stuck in the motion of really rough work weeks, work days, and just think like, wow, this sucks. <laughs> it does suck sometimes, but if you can reframe it a little bit and be like, I'm learning a lot and I'm getting better at this, or you force yourself to just be a little bit more curious about it and ask more questions, or you just put in a little bit more effort, odds are you will start to take more pride in your work and enjoy it a bit more, or at least make it appear more appealing. <laughs> My point is there's a balance to be had between listening to your gut and making important changes when you need to and working on enhancing what you already have. I should say I'd be lying if I said I was really good at this principle. It is one I try to keep in mind, but something I'm also reminding myself, you know. <laughs> anyway, guys, I can make this a mini series if you found this helpful at all, because believe it or not, I do have more than four life principles. <laughs> and until next time, turtle out. So check, check. <laughs> all right. Stupid.
That's a good blooper, actually. <laughs>